welcome back. Today we're talking about strain rosettes. We introduced strain gauges to you last time. We said, hey, strain is directional. We also told you about how strain gauges work. They only work in the direction of the strain, right? So if you have a bolt that's getting stretched, strain gauge has to go on in the direction of the stretch. Well, what happens if you've got like a big pressure vessel or something that's got a torque on it, it's got a load on it, it's got pressure on the inside of it, and I want to know what's the stress on the outside of it. Which direction is the stress acting? I don't even know, right? And if strain's directional, and if strain gauge only works in the direction of stress, if I get it like 90 degrees to stress, it just doesn't work. What do I do? How do I know where to, how to put it on there? Well... That's where strain rosettes come into play, okay? A strain rosette is an arrangement of three strain gauges in a manner such as this, this, this. It really doesn't matter, um, but you can get the information off of those three gauges. You can take a reading off of those, okay? You, so, and I'm going to get a strain from maybe gauge A, gauge B, gauge C, and I can take that strain if I know the angles of these gauges, put it into this. This is called the strain rosette equations, okay? So what am I looking for here? I'm looking for strain in the x direction, strain in the y direction, and gamma x, y, right? Shear strain, okay? So I'm looking for those three things. Well, to find three things, I gotta have three different equations because I have three unknowns, right? One, two, three. And to have three equations, three unknowns, I need three inputs to solve that. And that's where the strain rosette equations come from. Now, you kinda have, you're gonna have to remember these. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to memorize these, but it's not too bad, right? So look here. The strain in the x is times cosine squared, strain in the y is times sine squared, and then gamma is times sine and cosine. And those are the same exact equations for all three things. The only thing that changes is the angle, theta A, all this equation has theta B's in it, and this equation only has theta C's in it. Now over here, I've got A, B, and C, strain A, B, and C. Now what are those? Those are the outputs, right? We're gonna work this problem in a second. We have put this strain gauge on this handle where I'm applying some force, and I wanna know what is the strain right there, okay? Here's the arrangement, and I've got gauge A, B, C, but look here, I've got the readings from those three gauges, okay? So I know those three gauges, okay. Now, this, remember strain is a unitless thing. So you'll see this written like something like this. 60 times 10 to the minus six, okay? Whew, minus six, that's little, isn't it? You might also see it written this way, okay? 60 micro. Okay, and we know, hey, we know, micro is times 10 to the minus 6, yo. So this is just a different way that you might see this information written. So don't be tricked by that, okay, because it's the same thing. It's still 10 to the minus 6, okay? So the other thing we really need to know is what does this mean? Theta A, theta B, theta C. What is that? Okay, well, we all know this is the X, this is the Y. We also know that the X is 0 degrees. This is 90 degrees, here we go, 180, 270, so on and so forth, right? This is positive, this is negative, we know that. So the, for this particular problem here, theta A would be equal to zero degrees. Theta B would be equal to, boom, 45 degrees. Theta C would be equal to, whoop, 90 degrees, okay? If this was A, B, C, right? This one would be zero degrees. This one would be 120 degrees. And this one would be 120, 120. It would be 240. Or I guess if you're crazy, you could put minus 120, right? It would get you to the same place, wouldn't it? And those are the values that I would use in these equations for my theta A, theta B, and theta C, okay? So that's really all there is to it. Now, three equations, three unknowns. How in the world are we gonna solve? Ho, oh, ho, 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 you know what? This seems like a perfect job for, bam, the TI-36 Pro with the what? System solver on it, baby. Okay, so we're gonna be able to plug this stuff here into our system solver, 
and we're going to be able to hit solve. Boom. It's going to give us the answers, no problem. So let's look at this problem over here. What do they want us to do? Find the principal strains. Now, is this strain X, strain Y, gamma? Are those the principal strains? Principal. Remember what principal is. That's maximum, isn't it? Okay. Is this maximum? Uh, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know, right? So how are we going to get from these numbers over here to the principal strains? That sounds like a perfect job for our friend Mr. Moore Circle, isn't it? Okay. So we're going to find these values first. Then we're going to use Moore Circle to find the principal strains. Okay. Let's do that. It's two for one special, isn't it? Let's start off by looking at these values and finding strain X, strain Y, and gamma XY. Okay. This is going to be as simple as putting it in our calculator. Okay. I'm going to rewrite those equations right here for you to show you how to do this. Okay. Strain A, I'm just going to call this 60. Okay. And this, these are all going to be in micro, okay, is equal to strain X times the cosine squared of theta A. Now, on this one, right, here's A, here's B, here's C. So theta A is equal to what? Theta A is equal to zero degrees. Theta B is equal to 60 degrees. And theta C is equal to 120 degrees, okay? Now, in case you don't remember this, you, there's a couple ways you can do this. Number one, cosine squared of theta A. Now, theta A is zero degrees, okay? Now, if you don't remember what that is, maybe you don't. It's okay. Hit cosine zero and then just hit uh, enter, right? What does it give you? It gives you one. What's one squared? <laughs> you know, it's just one, isn't it? Okay, so plus strain Y times sine squared. Okay, let's do that. Let's do sine of zero. What is that going to be? Huh? Oh, that's zero. So guess what zero squared is? Still zero, right? This is going to go away, isn't it? This is going to turn into zero. Okay. And then I got what? I got sine times cosine. Well, remember that's zero over there. So that whole back term plus zero. Okay. So guess what? We just found something there, didn't we? Okay, strain of the X is equal to 60 micro. Boom, off of the first equation, right? Second equation, strain of the B. Strain of B is 135 micro. So 135 is equal to, okay, strain in the X, which is, we just found him, 60, right? Times cos cosine squared of theta B, which is um, 60 degrees, right? Now, cosine 60, we know that's 0.5, don't we? Cosine 60 equals 0.5, and then what? But we got to square that, don't we? So let's just do, let's just do a squared equals. That's 0.25, isn't it? So times 0.25, okay. Plus strain in the y times what? Sine sine of 60 equals 0.866, and then we got to square that. Bam equals. 0.75, okay, and then plus, here we go, gamma xy times what? 0.866 times 0 0.5, 0 0.433? Okay, was that too fast to put in your calculator? Two unknowns, right? Let's go to that last equation on there. We're going to put 264 in is equal to what? Now we don't have, this time we have 60 again, but this time our theta is what? 120, okay? So cosine of 120 equals negative 0.5, but we square that gives us what? 0.25, okay? Plus strain in the Y times, oh, sine, of 120, which is 0.866 squared. That's 0.75. Kind of looking the same here, isn't it? Plus gamma xy times, here we go, cosine of 120 times sine of 120 equals negative 0.433. Okay, 
So what do we got here? We got two equations, two unknowns, don't we? So this was going to be uh, 60 times 0.25 equals 15. And then 15 off of 135 is 120 is equal to 0.75 strain Y plus 0.433 gamma XY. You see what I'm doing here? 60 times a quarter, what is that? That's 15, 15 off of 264. 264 minus 15 is 249 is equal to 0.75 strain Y plus, oh, let's do minus, shall we? Minus 0.433 gamma XY, right? So here we have equation one, here we have equation two. Let's just put that in our system solver right quick, eh? Second, system solver, two by two, enter. First one I'm going to put in there is going to be what? Uh, 0.75, 0.75, enter. Next one, plus, plus um, 0.433, 0.433, enter. Constant is 120, enter. Next one is going to be 0.75, 0.75, Enter plus, uh, oh, minus 0.433. Enter, and then constant is 249. Enter, and then solve. Here we go. So it tells me that that uh, strain and the y is equal to 246. And gamma xy is equal to negative 148.96 micro, 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 okay? There's our values. Okay, let's write those right here. And let's do a little more circle and get those last two things. Okay, I went ahead and made myself a little bit of room here for us. What's the first thing we do in more circle? Do you remember? Remember, more circle is this, right? It's going to be 60, okay? And then minus 148.9, but divided by 2. Remember that part? What is that? What is that? 148.9, one, clear, clear. 148.9 divided by 2 is 74.45. Let's do that. Oh! 74.45, okay, 74.45, we'll put him negative, and then the second coordinate that we got is 2, 46, and 74.45, okay, this is going to be pretty good, right, more circle, uh, uh, remember this is gamma xy over 2, and this is our strain axis over here, right? So we've got two points, right? We've got 60, uh, 60, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, oh, there's a bunch in there. All the way over there. Nah, 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 nah. Let's pretend that's it, okay? So we got this point and negative 74.45, which is like there. Right, this is 60 minus 74.45. And then over here, way over there, that point right there was 246, 74.45. Okay, connect the dots. Okay, connect the dots. Remember this, find the radius. Here comes our circle. And this is what we want, right? This is what we want. We want this and this, and we want this guy up here. Right? Uh oh, this guy right there, okay? This guy right here, which is the same as this guy down here, that's gonna be our gamma XY max. We'll put max right there, okay? We want that guy, and then we want these two points over here. This is gonna be strain P1, and this is strain P2, okay, those are the values we want. And how do we get those? Hey, y'all, 
if we can find a radius of this circle, we are home free. Let's find the middle of this circle first. The middle of this circle, right? I had to go 60 this way and 246 that way. So the whole thing was what, 306? What's half of 306? 153, okay? So I can, I can go from 60 and go 153, or I can go from 246 and come back 153, right? And that would put me there, right? So 246 minus 153 equals 93. So the middle of our circle is at 93. I hope that that wasn't too like fast for you, okay? That's to find the middle of a circle, right? We made a triangle and we calculated the radius of the triangle, right? Or we are going to now. We knew that this side of the tri little triangle over here was 74.45. And this side of the triangle here, we just said was 153, didn't we? So the radius, the radius is going to be 74.45 squared plus 153 squared square root. So R is equal to, okay, here we go. 74.45 squared plus 153 squared equals square root answer equals 170.15 micro, right? And guess what? That is this guy right here. So gamma x, y max is equal to 170.15 one five micro bam now we need this guy strain p1 is equal to well guess what it's the middle 93 plus the radius right Bloop. this guy over here what's he the middle minus the radius oh this is easy isn't it okay you thought this was going to be hard didn't you no Okay, here we go, 93 plus 170.15, boom, 263.15 micro. That's principal stress one, and principal stress two is going to be 93 minus 170.15 equals negative 77.15. Okay? And there is your final answer. Ba, 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 da. What do you think? That's not too bad, right? Strain rosettes, the hardest thing you got to remember? Those equations. But beyond that, it's a little bit of system solver helps quite a bit, doesn't it? Remember how to do cosine squared. Just do cosine of a regular number and then square that number. Boom, you got that, right? All right, I hope this helps, and I'll see you on the next video.